Uh, like, look, where, where are we going with this? Because like, I also, say I'm not, I don't want, way. I'm not gonna get 50 bucks to some guy who's tra like trained on it's the mountains like, and the Himalayas of how to self. Because like, I, like, I'm if talking you're trying about to intentionally do it. You buy a coffee table, <laughs> and you kick it. <laughs> no, no. Here's what you but, do. Like, you buy the like coffee you're... table and just walk around and in the dark. Oh. Oh no. No, this is more important than losers finals. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> now is basically just putting yourself in a toe dangerous situation the same as stubbing your toe? Does Peach's heels make it easier for her hey. to stub Ike's mm. toes? Uh, do you think Ike stubs his toes on his sword? Like, how is he? Uh, look at it. It's pretty close to his feet. You know? He's just holding it. All He's just right. holding it right all next right. to his feet. All no, right. you all you right. gave all us right. permission. Yeah. <laughs> Facetiously. Okay. All right. Uh, oh my God! They just kissed right there. You saw that? <laughs> <laughs> the follow through the platform was extremely good, and this is the type of matchup that it feels like. Oh yes, thank Where? you for the instant replay. Where? Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> right here. There. Like, they're just right next yeah, to each other. Yeah. Yeah, like, just it. gently just brushing the hair off yeah. of Ike's cheek. You know. Exactly. <laughs> the gentle <laughs> caress. <laughs> this is a matchup that it feels like Maniac is is more accustomed to. Like he just gets to swing around his big sword. Peach has to find a very particular spacing to work around it, and therefore does right there. But it's much more focused on, hey, I Ooh. can press these buttons, and then you have to work around that, and then the Yomi levels start to add up. Versus against Helper. He was having a hard time breaking through just the flexibility of Sora's spells, while Peach's turnips are much more... It's something that you can read the player on. Yeah. For sure, and also... Uh, I feel like killing... Well, maybe killing will be mitigated in this matchup specifically because of the fact that Peach has counter on up B. True. Um, and also counter on side B as well. Uh, but if we have really good recoveries from Maniac, it might be difficult for Peach to actually end Maniac's life. In, in certain particular ways, I can see that, especially given how good Maniac plays center stage when they sit there. But a lot of times, Player 4 has just consistently denied ah. I, <laughs> the pop off, <laughs> the little fist bump there. <laughs> Uh, when player four gets a chance to hold center, they really hold center, and it's it's been consistently hard for a maniac to try and break their way past just playing around on platforms. But in this neutral situation, able to get the turn up out of shield into a quick 34. Yeah, and really, player four just standing ground. You saw earlier was holding shield, and then maniac like went past him, hoping to. Oh my god! Uh, what to drift? Unfortunate Nair. <laughs> that was you read the spot dodge and you get weak hit Nair. Minus on hit. That's so. That's that's tough. That's tough. Hey, grab. We haven't really seen Maniac getting any grabs. I mean, it makes sense. Peach is one of the hardest characters to grab in the game. And I mean, Ike's he gets stuff off of grab, but it's not like he's a grab or character. No, yeah, he gets like. Up throw fair, like that's not bad. Like, and it's all like low percent stuff. At percents like this, grab is exclusively for, for uh, positioning. Oh, which that's back throw is not bad. Oh, there's the dot lines. Ooh, done that's a ton of shield damage. The thing is, once that shield damage goes live, you see that player four wants to take advantage of it as much as possible. And well, that drift as well from player four, doubling down onto these back airs. This is. Got him. He <laughs> okay. hit, hit the low turnip. Wait, go, check it mean, out. Hold on a second. Is this like one of those, Um, now that he's discovered he can pop off, he's just going to keep doing it? You know? He's tasted the sweet ambrosia he's, of a pop off, and now he's just going to like try and <laughs> the chase the dragon of the, the unironic <laughs> pop off. Where did thy go? <laughs> So yeah. That's just the counter uh, Do we think we're going to see maybe more air dodging to ledge? Because like right in that exact position, I feel like maybe he could have air dodged to ledge and made it. I feel like the answer, I feel like that's always on the table. It's just a matter of can he get away with it is yeah. the hard part. Speaking of getting away with it, he just got away with side being at the very start of the game. Round start, round start mix-ups are have infinite depth. <laughs> 
because sometimes you get away with the silliest of things. I don't know of infinite depth. I feel like it's like one of four things can happen at the start of a match. And how many permutations? If one of four per character in infinite permutations. If player four is going 50 miles an hour and, <laughs> and gets hit with Ike back and throws there. a turn up at five miles an hour, how fast is Ike going off the stage? Wait, hold on a second. Does that mean that he needs to have opposite re uh, momentum energy putting him in the other direction? The answer is 42 because snakes don't have armpits. You know, I never thought of it like that. Can't <laughs> count. And I never will again. <laughs> um, You're welcome for having your third eye open. There you go. <laughs> Yo, look at that. He's crouching in place. Like, he, like I don't know what the crouching in what? place is meant to do. <laughs> it's it's, it's just, oh, he psychologically damaged him. Maniac saw him crouching in place. It's like, oh, you want me to hit you? And then he went and approached. <laughs> he's he's, uh, he's preemptively crouch canceling. <laughs> Another time. <laughs> that was actually a really good recovery right there. Just on the tiniest lip of the platform. Getting the neutral get up because he had to. He had to pick an option there with the down with the down toss to turn up. Man, player four being able to minimize the damage after losing his stock fairly early. Nice jump to ledge there. Yeah, and I will say it's hard for Peach to space around Ike forward air, but he's been doing a very decent job of finding those tiny gaps in the neutral airs that uh, Maniac is trying to find. And there it goes. Up. Wow, what a stock from player four. Like, he took exactly, since uh, he started that stock at 4% when Maniac started his second stock and took exactly, like, 13% that entire time yeah. off of a single trade. Like, well, he's okay. Wow. Very. I actually like that Maniac going for the neutral air facing away. Uh, it is a very different spacing that player four has to be mindful of because of how it hits behind him at the very end. It's, it's a very kooky move, uh, but it has enough variation where it's worth going for throughout the match. Trying to prep for another back air there, but a great double jump from Maniac, able to space around that and find a pretty solid punish as well. Another roll on, got away with, but the punish on the Peach Bomber. I was kind of waiting for a runoff fair there, but didn't find it. Instead, gets a punish on a getup attack. Ooh, I thought he side beat the other way. <laughs> Ooh, look at the spacing. Oh, Just the patience. I know, and that shield getting tiny. Like before, how uh, player four, when he sees that Maniac shield is small, he will turn on the gas. Same goes for Maniac. If he's hit with a few back airs, oh my god, he's dead. He gone. Yeah, okay, so... What happened in that game that made it so decisive for player four? And also, you know, what made the last game so in his favor? He would put Maniac off the stage and then Maniac would die. I know I made a lot of build up for it as if it was some great revelation, but honestly, it's just, it's just what was happening. I feel like the answer kind of lies in. I was resetting this. Uh, Sorry, just for, just the for answer a moment. is to not get hit off stage. Like, is like that. Uh, the pen was off. Okay. Re don't bother. The. The center stage game. And the fact that we continue to go back to Battlefield that I is, isn't inherently problematic. Also, yes, dot eyes. But the fact that Player 4 plays underneath this top platform, plays exactly the center stage so beautifully, to, and to know his dashback ranges and to understand that spacing is imperative against a character with a giant sword like Ike's because he knows what hits he can take. He knows where... He knows the end goal of almost all of Maniac's movements, and he can play around that perfectly. Like, look at that. It's like, you're trying to jump in? No, you're not. Okay, I wanted the third turn yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, I like that particular side view just to get as far away from Peach as possible. Peach is kind of slow, so if you have the means to get the all the way to the other side of the stage, I like this. Now, Player 4 basically has to guess. I mean, you guessed right there, right, catching yeah. the jump with that down smash. But when landing with those side Bs in that particular position, Player 4 has to guess, are you going to go all the way to the other side of the stage, or are you just going to drift down until you can just grab the ledge with it? We need to, I, think we, I feel like we need to see a couple more 
those type of situations like we saw a little earlier. Not only the chase down from the platforms, using those as a boost to reset his resources, but also the means of landing on Peach with these big aerials and prepping, uh, prepping for when player four breaks out of them. Also, he couldn't get through a set without one. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, that was a little, that was kind of a forced error where the force was the fear. <laughs> like, he wanted to go as low as possible to maybe avoid triggering the toad, but he just kind of dipped out a little bit too far. He didn't commit to that forward air. Follow, got the air dodge with the up air, but didn't follow the drift. That's, that could have been so much, and instead he's down 75 because of an earlier dot eyes. Working on another two, another two stock. And things things falling slowly and steadily out of Maniac's favor. Yeah, intercepting that another neutral there with a big fair player for finding so finding great utility in float out, floating out of shield, whether it be low or doing a jump into a float. It's super nice. All right, now we're seeing a bit better stage control from uh, Maniac using the up air to cover so much of it. And now, although this is still definitely clear for favor, okay, uh, Ike has paths to victory right here. And that's one of I love that. We've been seeing that, oh, that forward air in the corner so frequently from player four. And now uh -oh. we're, this is the game three adaptation. When his back is to the wall, is he going to make the turnaround? This almost happened to player four earlier. He had that come. He had that lead, and it went away from him almost. Will he be able to seal the deal out here? Yeah, can he finish the juggling? Gets the turn up into dash stack. It's not going to close out yet. Going to ledge that time. Trying to prep the same. Oh, another great quick draw from ledge. Maniac getting the weak hit of dash attack. Does he commit? No, they don't. They're ever so careful, knowing their percentage, knowing that just taking an unnecessary risk may uh, will not prove dividends but goes for the commitment there wow oh seeing the float knowing that at that point kind of committed to not being able to air dodge waits it out just a second and then double jumps bringing that up air to player four taking us to a game four yeah we get to see just this perfect spot like we're okay up throw great positioning set up your juggle and then boom double, double jump jumps. float yeah it's like Boom, boom. All you have left is also, an air dodge. I think he did not just immediately jump. Double no, jump he waited. He waited soft. just a second. Like, he walked forward. Yeah. He walked forward gently. I think that walk forward was in order to, if he decided to, like, double jump, cancel onto the uh, the platform, he could up tilt. You know? Yeah. Like, it's... I'm, I position for... I position for the air dodge, and once I don't see it, I know you only have left his float. Pull the trigger. Pull the trigger and go, and so oh, player four going all the way across the stage to catch that tech roll away. I like that crouch. That is something where a particular range is uh, just a nice little hurt box shift might be able to uh, help avoid the peach out of shield options. Still ever so careful with some of these, uh, with some of these uh, attack attempts from out of the corner uh, with player four and. Maniac just doing such a good job of layering some of his offense now. Like, not just kind of trying to outspace Peach entirely, <gasps> but instead picking... Ooh. He should be alive here, though. Never mind. Are you sure about that? <laughs> I, thought he, I think he could have quick drawed earlier, maybe. He could. Um, it, He was an air dodge lag, but it could have been a quick, uh, a very uh, short quick draw. Oh, pivoting into up airs there. Still plenty of damage and a turn up pull to boot. Also, amazing uh, sort of note of the timing. He like side beat and stopped it just soon enough that he got to the very edge of that platform without going past it. But lands these back airs, outspacing Nair once again. Yeah, it's these FD variants of uh, town and city that become really scary when you're trapped in the corner or having to land. Love that turnaround grab, but even better fast fall through the platform, avoiding double up air after the initial hit. That grab, wow. Wow, oh, right that air dodge, but didn't actually get the punish. Gave it up, too. Yeah, and Maniac, we did see that last game, he has the potential to have a big comeback in him. He needs to. Oh, Saturn. Deja vu. Honk if you log in and found out, Honk. Honk. Why would away. you shield? Why? Wait, yeah, true, right? <laughs> what? Why? Do you Why not know what Saturn it? does? Oh, <laughs> oh. Spookier every single time. The jump back fair. 
Blessed with hydration. Onk, onk. <laughs> he did drop shield just before it connected. Ah! Ah! Okay, so what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Not, not, okay. <laughs> wow! Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Player Zander. four, um. Oof. He's, uh, the Saturn's still here? He never left us. Onk. Honk. <laughs> <laughs> this Saturn, he's, he's, he's been living his best life right, right now. <laughs> this Saturn is the ultimate homie. <laughs> no! Okay. okay. Uh, just <laughs> I, was, I was watching the Saturn. I like the fact <laughs> that actually, um, I'm pretty sure Maniac died before the Saturn did. True. Wow. Okay, Saturn surviving. Appreciate that. What a... Like, just praying around you, the crypt Did you click draw. the shield break punish? You no, you no, I didn't. It's <laughs> really true, true, true. Wait. Come on, man. Come on, you're not going to clip the highlights yeah, of I the should've. game? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but still, clean stuff from Player 4. Just trying to wrap up what was a, a, an, om an almost deja vu situation of uh, game number three. But in this game four, he was able to pull the trigger on these punishes and pull the trigger early and move with that because as long as he's able to make the first move, he can shut down all of Ike's nares and fares and these landing aerials that are so deadly and not even have to worry about them. Genuinely, I wonder if there's maybe some matchup and experience involved also from Maniac's end. Plausible. Just the fact that he was shielding when Saturn was there. Man doesn't play with items, SMH. Hold on. 